Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the CRB for the for a polynomial model. That is given the observation, given the observation model x of n equal to summation k equal to zero to p minus one a k n power k plus w of n, where p is the order of the polynomial, n is the observation index, a k s are the coefficients. So w of n follows a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and variance equal to sigma square. Here the unknown parameters are a zero, a one, up to a p minus one. Now we want to derive a CRB for these unknown parameters, the variance of these unknown parameters. So the log the log likelihood function corresponding to this model with these unknown parameters is l of x. The parameters a bar, where a bar is equal to this vector that consists of all the unknown parameters from a zero to a p minus one. So the log likelihood function of the observations with this unknown parameter vector is given by logarithm of the product n equal to zero to n minus one, where n is the number of observations. The probability distribution of each observation with the unknown parameter vector a bar, and since W of n is a Gaussian distribution, the so is the observation observation x of n. So x of n also follows a Gaussian distribution with mean equal to this polynomial and variance equal to sigma square. That is, x of n follows a Gaussian distribution with mean equal to the sum k equal to zero. To p minus one a k multiplied by n power k, and the variance is clearly equal to sigma square. So by using this information, the log likelihood function becomes logarithm of the product n equal to zero to n minus one one by square root of two pi sigma square multiplied by exponential of minus x of n. Minus the summation k equal to zero to p minus one a k n power k on the square over two times the variance. So this is the log likelihood function, and since logarithm of a product becomes summation of a logarithms, summation of logarithms, we have minus n by two logarithm of two pi sigma square. Minus summation n equal to zero to n minus one x of n, the sum k equal to zero to p minus one a k into n power k whole square divided by two times sigma square. So this is the log likelihood function. Now we can construct the Fisher information matrix, the Fisher information matrix with the following elements: i of theta. At i comma j, that is i throw and j th column, the element in i throw and j th column is defined by minus expectation of the second derivative with respect to theta i and theta j of the log likelihood function. Here, the vector theta bar is actually a bar, so this becomes minus expectation the, the derivative, the second derivative with respect to a i and A j of the log likelihood function, which is defined as minus n by two logarithm of two pi sigma square minus the summation n equal to zero to n minus one x of n minus the sum k equal to zero p minus one a k n power k whole square divided by two times sigma square. So this is the element of the Fisher information matrix. So first, let us calculate or evaluate the first derivative of the log likelihood function. That is, the derivative with respect to a j of the log likelihood function minus n by two. This is the first derivative. Okay. 
of minus n by 2 logarithm of 2 pi sigma square minus the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n minus the sum k equal to 0 to p minus 1 a k n power k whole square divided by 2 times sigma square. So, this is equal to the first term is independent of a j's. So, it, the derivative is clearly 0 and the second term becomes minus 1 by 2 times sigma square. So, n equal to 0 to n minus 1. And the derivative of the square is 2 times the, de the difference x of n and the sum k equal to 0 to p minus 1 a k n power k. The derivative of the terms inside the parentheses are x of n is independent, so it's the derivative is 0 and for this sum, the derivative is clearly equal to minus n power j. Therefore, the first derivative becomes 1 by sigma square sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n power j multiplied by x of n minus the sum k equal to 0 to p minus 1 a k into n power k. This is the first derivative of the log likelihood function. Now, the element of the Fisher information matrix that is i theta at i comma j that is i throw and j -th column is equal to is equal to minus expectation of the first derivative with respect to a i of the first derivative with respect to a j that is this term is equal. So, we have 1 by sigma square summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n power j multiplied by x of n minus the sum k equal to 0 to p minus 1 a k n power k is equal to minus expectation of clearly the derivative of the first term that is n power j into x of n is equal to 0. So, we can ignore that term and the second one is at a i that is when k is equal to i the derivative is clearly equal to n power i. So, we have minus the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n power j into derivative of this sum with respect to a i which is clearly at k, I, k equal to i the derivative is n power i. So, we have minus n power i. So, the expectation of a constant is still the expectation of this invariant with respect to the observations x of n is equal to the same value which is the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n power i plus j. So, this is the element of the Fisher information matrix that is the element in i throw and j -th column of the Fisher information matrix. Note that the values of i comma j are, the, are from 0 to p minus 1, where p is the order of the polynomial. Oh, note that there is also 1 by sigma square. So, there is a 1 by sigma. Therefore, we can now we can construct the Fisher information matrix i of theta as follows. So, for i equal to 0 and j equal to 0, the sum is clearly equal to n. So, the first term is 1 by sigma square into n and for i equal to 0 and j equal to 1, the sum will be the first second term that is the term in first row and second column is n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n that is sum of the first n minus 1 natural numbers and the third term is n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n square and so on and in the second row we have the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n that is the sum of the first n minus 1 natural numbers since in the second row, i is equal to 1 and j is equal to, in the first column, j is equal to 0. So, this is the result. And next, the element in second row and second column is clearly equal to the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n square. That is the sum of the squares of the first n minus 1 natural number. And we repeat this process. And in the last row, we have the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 and clearly i is equal to p minus 1. So, we have n power p minus 1 and j is equal to 0, of course. So, finally, the element in the p row and p column is clearly equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1, n power 2 times p minus 1. So, this is the Fisher information matrix 
for a pth degree polynomial where the parameters are the coefficients a a0 to a p minus 1 are unknown. Now we can easily verify the result for in the case of a line fitting problem that is when p is equal to 2 then the mission information matrix from this result can be written as for p equal to 2 we have 1 by sigma square n and then the second value is sum of the first n minus 1 natural numbers n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n and the element in second row and first column is also the same summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 n that is sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers the term in second row and second column is the sum of first n minus 1 squares of natural numbers so this is the Fisher information matrix the Fisher information matrix in the case of a line fitting problem where x of n is equal to a naught plus a1 n plus w of n thanks for watching